ELISA is a plate-based assay technique designed to detect and measure soluble substances, like antibodies, antigens, proteins, peptides, and hormones. ELISA assays come in various types. In this video, we'll focus on competitive ELISA and explore how it's used to detect and measure a specific protein of interest in a sample. The initial stage of competitive ELISA involves plate coating. To start, samples are positioned in a designated area. And for this coating process, 96 well plates or 8 well strips are commonly employed. The well strip is placed into a support frame. Following that, a specific antibody, designed to bind to our protein of interest, is applied to coat the well strip. The antibody solution is added into the wells, ensuring that each well receives the appropriate volume. Next, the well strip is covered with adhesive plastic to establish a controlled environment for the incubation process. In ELISA, polystyrene is widely preferred as the solid phase material. Antibodies are then immobilized onto this polystyrene surface. After immobilizing antibodies onto the solid phase, the adhesive plastic is removed. The well strip is then overturned and tapped to eliminate antibody solutions, and an absorbent paper towel is used to ensure thorough removal. Next, the wells undergo a thorough washing with a specially formulated wash buffer. This solution effectively rinses the wells, removing any unbound substances. Using a wash buffer helps eliminate any unbound antibodies. After discarding the wash buffer, an absorbent paper towel is used to remove any remaining liquid. The next step in competitive ELISA is to block any unoccupied sites on the solid phase. During this step, a blocking solution is applied, usually containing proteins like BSA, serum, non-fat dry milk, or casein. The blocking solution is added into each well containing immobilized antibodies. Subsequently, the well strip is covered and incubated. The proteins in the blocking solution create a barrier on the plate, preventing substances from binding to these sites in subsequent steps. After completing the blocking step, the adhesive plastic is removed, followed by the discarding of the blocking solutions. An absorbent paper towel is then used to thoroughly absorb any remaining solution. Next, the wells are thoroughly washed with the wash buffer. This step helps to ensure that any remaining blocking protein is thoroughly removed from the wells. After discarding the wash buffer, any residual liquid is removed using an absorbent paper towel. Now, moving on to the next crucial step in competitive ELISA. Preparing and adding the sample mixture. In this stage, a conjugated protein is utilized, sharing the same affinity for the immobilized antibodies as our target protein found in the samples. The protein is conjugated to specific enzyme, facilitating both detection and quantification. The solution containing the conjugated protein is added to each sample. Once the samples are mixed with the conjugated protein, it's time to add each sample into its corresponding well. Next, the well strip is covered, initiating the incubation process. During the incubation phase, a competition takes place. Our protein of interest competes with the conjugated protein both seeking binding opportunities with the immobilized antibodies. When the concentration of conjugated proteins is higher, they outcompete and bind more effectively to antibodies than our protein of interest. Conversely, when the concentration of our protein of interest is higher, it outcompetes and binds more effectively to antibodies than the conjugated protein. If our protein of interest is absent in the sample, only the conjugated protein will bind to the antibodies. After incubation with the samples, the solution is removed from each well. 
Subsequently, a paper towel is used to eliminate any remaining liquid. The next critical step is to perform a thorough wash to remove any unbound substances. The washing step effectively eliminates unbound substances, leaving behind only the specific antibody protein complexes. After discarding the wash buffer, an absorbent paper towel is used to eliminate any remaining liquid. Following the final wash, the next critical step involves detection and quantification. This is achieved by using a substrate that initiates a reaction, resulting in a detectable signal. The substrate solution is carefully added into each well. Then the well strip is covered and incubated. The protein can be labeled with enzymes, such as alkaline phosphatase, beta-galactosidase, and horseradish peroxidase, HRP. For HRP, various detection reagents have been developed, with tetramethylbenzidine TMB standing out as one of the most widely used chromogenic substrates. In the presence of hydrogen peroxide, HRP enzyme catalyzes the oxidation of TMB, resulting in the formation of two intermediate oxidation state products. One product is a colorless TMB cation radical, which is in equilibrium with a blue-green colored charge transfer complex, CTC. With an increased presence of conjugated proteins, more substrates will be catalyzed, generating significant intensity and a visible blue color. On the other hand, when our proteins of interest are more prevalent, fewer substrates will be catalyzed, resulting in less intensity and a lighter blue color. When only labeled proteins are present, a substantial amount of substrate will be catalyzed, leading to significant intensity and a deep blue color. Next, prior to photometric detection, the reaction is commonly stopped by lowering the pH of the reaction mixture using a strong acid, such as sulfuric acid. Following a second one-electron oxidation event facilitated by HRP, the blue-colored TMB product is transformed into a yellow-colored diamond oxidation product. Finally, a spectrometer instrument is utilized to measure the absorbance in each well. After measuring the absorbance, the target protein concentration in the samples is determined using a calibration curve. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in other ELISA tests, you can check out this channel.